Hey guys, Mike here. So it looks like it was a very powerful day in the market. Stocks moving up, the SPY and the QQQs and Tesla were just rocking this morning and we're gonna get into that one uh, very shortly here. I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what happened this morning because I've gone through that one in detail before. But what really still surprised me is the stocks that are set new 52 week highs. Like every day I just look at this and I'm like, huh, Caterpillar, first solar I can believe in. Slumber J, WWE, that is not one I would have thought coming into 2022 or 2023, when, so I guess we are traveling like crazy, right? If you got a hotel there sitting in a casino, setting new 52 week highs, right? I mean, so this is the new leadership, right? This is what's gonna lead us out of this bear market, supposedly. And so what do you think about that? Put in the comments and stuff. Uh, but every day I just look at the new 52 week highs of McDonald's and Walmart and all these other ones, you know, they've just been roaring and you're like, Man, I, I call those, I mean, me the more defensive, right? You would think it's me, people would be getting that more defensively. But again, I don't think wins defensive. And I don't know much about WWE. It's wrestling. Uh, maybe they just do good. If there is a recession, I don't know. But uh, it's just, I don't know, it, it's almost surprising in a way to see that happening. But, you know, talking about Tesla <laughs> and what happened this morning, uh, you can see right here, I put this in this Discord, I said, wow, you know, basically what a week makes, right? I mean, last week it was just put score, and now look at the calls. The calls are just dwarfing the puts, right? And if we scroll down, you can see it even better right here. The right side going from like maybe a, maybe a quarter over, and then to the right calls to the left, that little part is puts, right? This was total opposite last week. And if you look right here, this is what I said, man, the calls are just rolling in. They were just pouring in right and we go over the chart you'll see what this does for tesla and what happened it was just started roaring all those calls are coming in right here and it got above the anchor vwap and it just started roaring went right past this weekly options expected move and got way away from its anchor vwap and looking at anchor vwap if you don't know what that is somebody in the discord put me onto it and it works pretty well and then you see the volume down there i mean just massive volume pouring in of course it, the anchor vwap to me acts like a rubber band you'll notice this as soon as it gets too far away Comes back down, loses it, uh, starts selling down for most of the day, and then of course it gets too far away from it again on the downside, and boom, uh, just like a rubber band, starts shooting back up. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, really appreciate it. And if you're getting anything out of this, please hit the like, and think about sharing the video, guys. But as I've showed you multiple times, what happens, especially on Tesla, when you have calls like that just flooding into the market, and the market makers who are the ones selling it to you, they have to take the opposite side, right? So they're taking the put side, but then they have to hedge by buying the shares. And so that's what you see that surge in volume pushing it up, right? And so no surprise there in the morning time. But of course, what happens as usual, people start pouring into it. Oh, we got to get in. And then it sells back off. But then it comes back at the end of the day. It's like, there you go. But I was really surprised I got to 125 today. Uh, I didn't expect it to go to 125, maybe 123. But, you know, it, it's a hard one to predict because of, I guess, like somebody said, I think it's the most highly uh, traded stock as far as options are concerned. And so that was interesting. But the other thing to watch out for, and it's crazy, we got CPI tomorrow. And we're going to get into that in just a minute because something came across the board today. I think it's the first time it's happened in the last 12 months. We'll see. But it was pretty surprising. And if you look at the, the S&P right here, you know, what's happening? Above the 50, above the 100 on the daily. Sitting there with a positive MACD cross. RSI is looking bullish. And what are we? We're, we're barely below the 200 now. So getting ready to cross over 200. So it, and they're only 2% away or 2 to 3% away from breaking out of that downtrending channel that we've been in, right? For 13 months. And something else to look at too, as well, and I was telling the members right here, is the this is the eight period and the 21 period moving averages, right? And this can be powerful, right? When these cross, which they have now today, when those cross, the last two times this has happened, we ended up, as you can see right here, end up getting a 12% move up the last time it happened. And the time before that, we ended up getting a 10% move up uh, when it happened. And so obviously with CPI being tomorrow, I can throw all everything out of the woodworks, right? Because here's what I'm going to tell you. The expectation, 6.5 or 6.6, .6, depending on where, where you're looking at this right here. But what's really crazy, this came out today, Every single major institution now is picking it under what projection is. Wells Fargo 6.3, and then I think every single one of them besides that has 6.4 or 6.5. And so none of them are picking it to come in high at all. And of course, the big one's going to be where does core come in at? That's what the Fed obviously looks at when they're basing their decisions uh, more importantly because it's just more sticky. It's hard to get rid of. 
than this one is. And so when I saw that, I was like, wow, it's like every one of them picked the hit exactly at expectation or below, right? And so that's that's pretty interesting. I don't, I don't think we've had a full consensus like that yet. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think we have. So let me know in the comments what you think it's going to be. Are you playing it um, or anything with options or anything like that or just sitting the sideline and saying, I'm good. I'll let this binary event just go by. And obviously, you know, that's what I was telling the members. I'm not doing any trade setups because there's no point. I mean, what's the point of that? Because that event tomorrow, if we come in, you know, say we come in at 6.3, 6.4, yeah, the market should go higher, right? If we come in at 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, then obviously the market should tank. And then, of course, let's say we hit headline. Well, what about core, right? That's what we're, we're really going to care about the most, I would hope. I mean, you never know in this market, of course, what they're going to do. But, you know, it, obviously we should move either way. And if they're just wanting to kill premiums on both sides, they'll just sit there and the market will be flat. <laughs> well, that'd be fun, right? And so it definitely can happen. And then, of course, Friday we get bank earnings coming out. So it's definitely the next 48 hours is interesting. But another thing I found very interesting, you might be surprised about, in the comments, and I'll pause for effect, which index do you think has performed the best in 2023 so far in the first couple of weeks? And this one actually surprised me. And I actually look at charts, but I don't look at this one as much as I should. I need to start looking at it more. And so go ahead and put down in the comments, what do you think? And here you go. So the number one, this right here is year to date percentage, right? Obviously emerging markets are killing everybody up 6%. But then look at what's coming on now. The Russell 2000 growth index, the Russell 2000 value index, and then of course Russell 2000 index overall is performing much better than the Dow, that's for sure. It's beaten the NASDAQ and it's handily beaten the S&P. And so let me know in the comments if you were surprised by that, but you know, small caps, I mean, again, they trade in these channels, right? And it trades in these channels. I showed it many times how it trades in these channels, uh, the Russell especially, and it hit the bottom of that channel and it's been moving back up to the top of the channel. That don't mean it's gonna break out or anything, but that's just how it's been trading. And you can see this is one of those things where everybody talks about emerging markets, emerging markets. And of course you get everybody talking about emerging markets and you hear for years and some of them just never emerge, right? But you know, now you're starting to see finally versus the S&P, when you look at the past five years, it's finally outperforming the S&P. And then don't forget the other thing is I'm curious to see where people are with bonds. Let me know in the comments what you're doing because they're just, I mean, look at that. They, they've just been destroyed. I mean, I think, like I said, I think it is the worst year ever for bonds. And it's tough to figure out with bonds because, you know, obviously if the Fed keeps raising rates and finally the bond market goes, oh my goodness. You know, they raised it higher than we thought they were going to raise it. And then they start holding it for longer periods of time and they thought they were going to hold it. Our yields going to start to go back up. And if yields go back up, where's the bond prices going? They're going down, right? Yields go up, bond prices go down. Bond prices, or yields go down, bond prices go up. And so let me know in the comments, are you, are you playing bonds? Are you into you know, like TLT or something? That's a very popular one uh, right there. And I've heard it's probably one of the most popular trades, at least was one of the most popular uh, people were getting into and starting to dollar across the average end. Because if you're looking more longer term, you would think, it would look pretty good five years from now. And again, bonds don't move like, um, you know, stocks, but still being this far down, you saw quite a big move in TLT, right? And so, you know, it's something to be looking at as well. But, you know, that's what we got for the day. I was going to put a lot more data. I'm going to hold off on it because I got a lot of data for small companies, which make up the majority of employment. And so, and, it, and some very interesting data came out, some of it good, some of it not so good. And, you know, I do find it interesting that, the economic news, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I can't find any good economic news, right? The, the yields are so inverted, it's insane. We've never seen it before. But when you look at what the stocks that are making the new 52-week highs, it's basically all based on us. Like I did I did find out, yeah, we're buying homes, all right. Because, you know, I know KB Homes just reported, I think they're down a little bit, but they made good money right in the fourth quarter. We're just not buying uh, existing homes. We're buying new homes, right? And I'll show you that one tomorrow as well. But I did find that out. So, you know, going to be an interesting day. Remember, it's before pre-market. So there's going to be a huge gap up, a huge gap down, depending on the data. But it'll happen before uh, opening bell. So, you know, buckle up, click, click, be ready to go, be nimble, do your thing. And I'll see you guys later.